WPTV. Welcome back to the desk. After a long all-star break, the NBA season resumed last night. But before we get into the action on the court, we have to turn it over to news surrounding Spurs forward Kawhi Leonard. Dante, big news Greg Popovich provided with us. What is going on with Kawhi Leonard right yeah, now? So Greg Popovich is basically the George Washington of the NBA. He doesn't tell a lie. And he said this week that he wouldn't be surprised if Kawhi Leonard doesn't if Kawhi Leonard doesn't play this season. And that's that's scary. The team and Kawhi are reportedly not on the same page when it comes to how they're handling their injury. And it, it's affecting them not only off the court, but on the court. If you take a look at their stats from last year compared to this year, you see big drops in points per game and three-point percentage. Their defense is a little worse, and the big kicker there is their winning percentage. They were a lot better off this time last year than they are this year. As a story, this has more implications long-term than it does short-term for the Spurs. Right now, I think it's a two-horse race in the West between Golden State and Houston. So even if the Spurs had Kawhi Leonard, they probably wouldn't beat either of those teams in a seven-game series. But the big thing is, will Kawhi Leonard leave? Is this big enough to ruin the Spurs' relationship with Kawhi Leonard? Because if he leaves, they have an aging coach in Greg Popovich, who's great, but I don't know how long he's going to be left in the league. And there's not a team around there that's tough enough to contend with the West going forward without Kawhi Leonard. Philip, you seem to be chomping up the bits on this one. <laughs> now, uh, Dante mentioned how he thinks it's a two-horse race in the West, and I also believe that, and I think Kawhi might believe that as well. So he doesn't want to ruin his stock come this offseason, maybe get a max extension from the Spurs. You know, if he plays this year, it might lower his stock. We saw it with IT, with Isaiah Thomas. And uh, he might just be waiting out the season just so he get that max money, the financial reassurance, and come back next year, MVP status. Might be the smart move. We'll keep it in the Western Conference. Steven, we'll start with you. Who is your favorite to pull it out? Seems like a two-horse race, but is it really? Well, if we look at the standings from the Western Conference, it's pretty up there with the Warriors and the Rockets, with the Rockets being the number one seed and the Warriors being number two. Then we got the Spurs, who we were just talking about, and the Timberwolves, young and up-and-coming team at the number four. It's a pretty close race. I personally have the Rockets. They're a pretty well-oiled machine right now. If we take a look at the game from last night against the Clippers that the Warriors were playing, they were, look, they were looking really good in the beginning, but towards the end of the game, the Clippers came back, and they were a little shaky. Like, like I said, Warriors came up to a really big lead towards the first half of the game. Then the second half, I personally think, was all Clippers to the last minute and a half of the actual game. I feel like we just had this conversation. I don't think this is indicative of what the Warriors can do. I mean, look, I at, look at what they did in the first half of this game. They were firing all cylinders. They're moving the ball around here. Yeah, this team, when they want to be the best team in the league, they could be. And you see this with Cleveland and with them, too. Like, the regular season for them doesn't matter. They get out to their early lead. They're I mean, fine. They go in cruise control at the end of the season. If, they Steph, turn Curry, the if Steph Curry doesn't go off for 44 in this game, I don't think they win. The Especially with, with the, the Clippers, Clippers coming back. The playoffs. They're borderline. They're like 7th or 8th seed. <laughs> okay. They can get there. They can get there. They could get there, but it doesn't matter. And that's actually a potential matchup the for Warriors the Warriors are a completely different team in the playoffs. This is not the kind of game you're going to see out of Golden State in the playoffs. They're going to turn it up. This team, there's no way the Clippers are this close in a series with Golden State. I don't know. I have, hey, you mentioned Golden State being a different team come playoff time, and I agree with you. Yeah. Last year, they were 28-4 and after the All-Star break. They really started to tune things up. But the Houston Rockets this year are legit. And we can't denounce how good they've been. I mean, right now they have the best offensive rating in league history. The history of the league. All <laughs> 70 years has been going on. The best offensive season we're witnessing right now. The other top three teams, do you know who they are? They are the 92 Bulls, the 87 Lakers, and the 2017 Warriors. Do you know what all three of those teams had in common? I'm going to guess they won the championship. That's very good, Jesse. Because they all <laughs> did. All three of those teams won the championship. Also, this team is 28-1 and when Clint Capella... Chris Paul and James Harden all playing, including two wins. That's two wins over the Warriors this se not season. Not one, but two. Exactly. Not, one, not, not one. two, not three. <laughs> well, they're going to need four if they meet come playoff time. Switching from the Western Conference to the Eastern Conference always seems to be known as the LeBron Conference, or is it not the LeBron Conference anymore, Philip? Who is your favorite? I don't think it's the LeBron Conference. I think we're moving the conference all the way up north to Toronto. <laughs> if we look at the standings, the Toronto Raptors are number one in the conference this year. 
followed closely by the Celtics, who have been dropping off as recently. Of course, the Cavaliers are in there, and we could mention the irrelevant Wizards come playoff time, because we all know they're not going to do anything. <laughs> they will never do anything in the playoffs. But the Toronto Raptors. No, you Boy, do I love these <laughs> Toronto Raptors. You said irrelevant Washington Wizards. That's funny, because in the playoffs, it seems Toronto becomes irrelevant. But this they were in the conference finals just two years ago. Won two games against the championship Cleveland Cavaliers. But this year's Toronto team is different. They're how is this team different? All right, I'll tell you how, exactly. The top seven in both offensive and defensive rating, the only team to do that in the last three years, they're third in the league in net rating, third in net rating with beating their opponents by 8.1 points per game. Cleveland, how much? Is it 7.1? Is it 6.1? No, it's 0.1. <laughs> they're beating their opponents by 0.1 points per game. And we're talking about all regular season. This is the same two stars that Toronto has had. They added an old Serge Ibaka and Honus Valanciunas, who, guess what, still can't rim protect. I've seen this team before, and at best, they take LeBron to six when he's still coasting through the playoffs, just taking his time to get to the Warriors. Well, I'm telling you, this team is much different. These Cavs are worse than they were in past years. These Raptors are much better. Better. Right now, the Raptors are fifth in fewest turnovers, fourth in opponent field goal percentage, four, fifth in opponent three-point percentage. Cavs are 27th in defense right now. I want to see if this team can actually show up in the playoffs because I'm, I've seen this team before numerous times, and it seems like Kyle Lowry does this disappearing act in the playoffs. That's that's a big thing in both the East and the West. You have this one team that people like Phillip think is absolutely great, and then you have another team that we know has done it in the playoffs, and both of those teams have done it the last three years in the playoffs. That's why I, I think Cleveland is still the, the top gun in the East. You know, when, when LeBron James gets his way and he has a brand new team with him, this, this team is built to win right now with him. And I, think I mean, if you really look at past years, you had the Boston Celtics taking the number one seed last year. You had the Atlanta Hawks team that took the number one seed that one year. And LeBron ends up taking it to the finals every single year, no matter LeBron, what. LeBron, this year, I'm not buying the story. Are I the Raptors I, making the finals this year? I think they could. I think I'm not going to make that <laughs> announcement yet because, you know, I'm still debating I mean, you've been, you've been pretty, you were pretty vocal I, I on that. I think we should be taking them more seriously than we have been. I think this is a new Raptors team. I mean, they've only played the, the Cavaliers once this year, and it was a 34-point I mean, blowout. is there a big difference, C.J. Miles? Is that what it is? Well, they're... they're it's a more well-oiled machine. It's the same machine, but it's much better. The Cavs are much worse. I, I can see it happening. I'm I a big fan happening. of DeMar DeRozan, but I'm not a big fan of the Warriors right now. DeMar DeRozan's on a whole nother level this year. He's contending with James Harden for that one and two spot for the uh, top shooting guards in the league, but I definitely think that it's going to be its not, not going to be the Raptors. It has to be the Cleveland Cavaliers. You can't count out LeBron we'll at see. all. We'll see. We will definitely see. That is all the time we have for basketball. But do not go anywhere because the hockey crew takes the ice up next after the break.